Hello and welcome back to Dread Delusion. And uh, we're here in the city of Prosperity? Prosper? Something like that. Looking for clues to Caxton Frost Past. Here. That looks like a door. Maybe not. Looks like it would just lead out there. I can get there other ways. Alright. Hello. What was the city called? Progress. Okay. The city of progress. I mean, if your goal is to turn into a giant mono-eyed flesh blob, then I guess much progress has been made. Okay, I think I can go down here. This is the only way I can go right now. just down a truth potion. I've got plenty, I think. Attention all citizens. Uh, yep, we've read that. Looking, well... Looking for workers to join the city of progress. The city of the future. put in that slot there. Not sure what's going on there. Is that a method of opening up the door from this side? Zambarian spectacles. These Zambarian eyeglasses are remarkably well preserved. Cypher magic has been engraved into their intricate mechanisms to reveal magical objects that could be manipulated. Is that a, um, like relic thing I could? Equip. Uh, I'll wear it, sure. Oh, I see. Ah, it makes them glow. These interactables. Okay, that's useful. Is that a cannon? It's a cannon. Yeah, I still don't know what that did. Hmm. 
so many lockpicks. That, uh, I guess that's what happened when I put so many points into agility. And I'm using uh, lockpick related runes, which make it easier to pick locks. So I wind up with a lot of extra picks. Triangle, triangle key. A heavy key with a triangular pin found in the corrupted city of progress in the clockwork kingdom. Okay. Oh, I wish it would say which key I used to open that. Triangular key. There's a triangle above the door. It's probably the one I just found. from the other side. Oh, this must be back at the start. Okay, opening up shortcuts. There we go. I need a diamond-shaped key. Let's check down here first. Can't they just firebomb the entire city? That's a cute bike. It's gotta be hard to ride. An octagonal uh, wheel like that. Glorious silk. Yeah, I think this city is beyond saving. I don't know why they just can't... ...blow it up. Can I open it this way? Hey, there we go. Emergency work Rhoda. Citizens Wong, Murray, Ustinov, guarding schoolhouse, street patrol, wildfire checks, barricade maintenance, creche duty, infirmary duty, quartermaster, talent show. Hmm. That's a triangle symbol. There we go. Um, all right, let's check over here first. There's an elixir over there. Oh, 
Oh, there's a stairway. Half complete stairway. Okay. Um, well, I can just fall down there. I think I want to jump roof to roof here. Uh, let's see. Jump. There we go. Jump. I should try out my bow. All right, well, no thanks. I'll stick with melee. Nice that they give you options, I guess, but I can't see with how easy the combat is. I can't really see doing anything other than melee. Oh, I need a diamond. Okay. Ah! Okay, there's a... There we go. I want that. Let me up. Now. Oh. This pathway opened up. Oh, wait a minute. No, that was always open up. Okay. Let's try up here. It's a big place. Trying not to get lost here, but, uh... Here we go. Main goal, find the diamond key. Gotta be around here somewhere. Uh, damage. They look a lot meaner than they are. Alright, this looks significant. Could be something here. I can just break this door. Boom. Official record of Junior... Cosmo cosmetologist uh, Pew. I don't think this is relevant to the story, and I can't read all of it. There we go. Square key. You say square, I say diamond. From the right point of view. Have I been up there? Why is that not... I'm sure I've been up there. Oh, maybe not. I was looking at the door. I was like, why is that not broken into? There we go. Okay, first of all, there's a door. Uh, there's two diamond doors. 
I'll take that. Oh, here's one. Rare Ring of Health. Now, I think there's at least two more. I know where one of them is. Uh, over there. There's another door I haven't been in right there. Let's see. And a chest. I gotta get back on the roofs. Yeah, there, right there. And then, uh, right there. Got it, music box cylinder. A slender brass cylinder bristling with tiny needles designed to fit a clockwork music box. Horace Metcalf might know more. The early machinist imagined a new kind of everyday luxury. Bread for all, but roses too. Alright, that's all we've found so far. The music box. Um, how do I get... Let's see. There we go. Let's get back up there. Another cannon? Yeah, it looks like that's what it is. They expect to be attacked or something? I guess to defend against sky pirates. Ah, uh, Imbarian Ore. Finally. Not that I need it. Okay, I think, I think I'm just about done here. I was expecting more. So, yeah, all we could find is the music box. I think that's it. All right, let's head back to Horus. See what he he uh, makes of this. I wonder if this music box is supposed to snap him out of his uh, whatever trance he might be in. Make him realize who he truly is. Oh, uh, I probably should. I'm running low on stamina. I, I gotta drink something. There we go. Use it. Haven't slept in a while. Hi there. I'm back. Ugh, what a jolly horrid day. This is going to affect my dreams for weeks. A new dark direction for Horace Metcalf. Uh, I found this brass cylinder in a ruin. Do you recognize it? Why, yes I do. It's part of that old music box over there. I'm no good with devices, so I've never been able to figure out what was wrong. But how did you find it? 
The box hasn't played in years. Um, music box? Over where? Do you want it? Oh, this thing. Okay. It's a music box of rare and intricate design. Its lid depicts pastoral scenes of ordinary mortals working and relaxing together. Finely inlaid with iridescent chiton and mother of cloud pearl. We'll have to um, trust that description because I sure can't see it. However, there doesn't seem to be any music in it. Dun dun dun. Insert the brass drum you found in progress. You laboriously wind up the mechanism and then release. As the cylinder turns, its needles pluck the teeth of a steel comb. And a tender twinkling music begins to play. It's a haunting tune, somehow familiar and ethereal all at once. Like a lullaby from time zone beginning. You feel a shiver run up your spinal cord. And the hairs of your arms prick up. Behind you, a porcelain teacup smashes the floor. Oh, Horace. Metcalf gazes into nothingness. Oh, he stood up. His eyes half closed. His breathing is slow and gentle, as if he's sleeping. Senor Metcalf, are you alright? He does not respond. Uh, <laughs> poke him. Wave your hand in front of his face. Quick as a flash, he jerks awake as you grab and grabs your wrist with surprising strength. No. Frantic eyes dart around the room before coming to rest on you. His breathing is sharp and shallow, like he's just survived a fight. You. You blooming idiot. You've ruined my cover. What do you mean, your cover? I did this, you nincompoop. I erased my memories. It's the only thing that kept me hidden from the Clockwork King for all these years. The only thing protecting Samuel. And now you've gone and ruined it all, you... You blinking artichoke. Hmm, that's interesting. It still seems I can't swear. Can't swear. Uh, how did you erase your own memories? What, as if it's hard? Perhaps you're aware that the king alters people's minds with an old book on memory magic purloined from the Duchess. I had a little trouble back engineering the technology. I called in a favor outside the, inside the machinist guild. To create some false records, and voila, Horace Metcalf was born. Except now you've killed him, you prize flipping dimwit. Uh, you seriously brainwashed yourself to not swear? In my Dark Star days, I was known for having a rather dirty mouth. All just compensating, of course. Still, making Horace more prissy seemed a useful addition to my guys. Aren't you happy to be your true self again? He squints at you. You really don't get it, do you? I like being Horace. Nobody ever shot at Horace. Nobody tried to throw him off a skyship. Nobody ever put a flipping uh, Typhos under his bed for beating them at cards. Do you know how nice it is, after years of being feared, to simply being liked? Listen, never mind all that. I need your help. Help? You blunder in here. You set fire to my life. And you want my help? You can go, go, go hang yourself. I'll have my ball, uh, my bally hands fully escaping the kingdom. And, oh yes, never seeing anyone I love ever again. Uh, Velikalos is trying to... Destroy the world or save the world? I don't know which one. If I don't find Velikalus, the Inquisition will kill me. Frost brows rumple as he listens to your explanation, so it's begun. Vela's great work. Has she already gone to the Underlands? Uh, yes, to something called the Cradle. He shakes his head. Not my problem. If you found me, it's only a matter of time until the King finds me too. I must put my affairs in order and depart immediately. 
You helped Vela build her army. How is she not your problem? He snarls, because I never was a Dark Star. I was a spy. As a young man, I w it was my misfortune to become a hero of the Clockwork Kingdom. My aptitude with ancient Imperium machines was prized, and I was easily dazzled by conditional acclaim. You must understand, the future used to be so bright here. People lived well, and we truly seemed on the brink of a better world. I wanted to believe that more than anyone, so when the king gave me a chance to truly serve my country, I accepted. I posed as a disgruntled emigre, offered, uh, offering my services to Vela Calus. Together, we spent the next eight years unlocking the secrets of the Imbarians, all of which I secretly relayed to my sovereign. Having been somewhat of a thespian in my school days, I confess I found the subterfuge exciting. However, one does not wear a mask for so long without it changing one's face. As news from the kingdom grew darker, I came to trust Vela over the king. She promised that we could be the ones to build Elysium, using powers from before the world rend. And until that blooming mutiny, I believed her. What caused the mutiny? Discontent had long been brewing over our frayed relations with the Union, and anyone could see that Vela was growing more reckless and paranoid by the week. Her plan to drag us all to the Underlands was merely the final straw. How did she respond? The mutiny was led by Vela's childhood friend. I think she felt it as a rejection not only of her plans but of herself to everything they'd shared. Pray that on the day you feel like that, you do not have a command... You do not have command of an, uh, Eschaton class Kilo Caliber Howitzer. So what did he do in the end? I fought for Vela that day, but my faith was broken. I'd lived through enough purges and coups, uh, coup d'etats in... in the king's early years to know a tyrant when I saw one. Still, my mission stood, or so I thought. As it turned out, my next orders would be my last. The king wanted me to steal Vela's treasure map. To betray the only people that ever felt truly at home with and deliver untold power to an increasingly callous despot. Yet what was my alternative? Betray my homeland and the hand that power and hand that power instead to an increasingly cruel and unstable outlaw? It was an impossible choice, so I did what any coward would do. He shrugs. I ran away, pooping my pants. My only mistake was to hide my old memories instead of destroying them. A sentimental lapse I shan't repeat. Uh, why did you choose these ruins in particular? Because they were my home. I grew up in progress amidst the machinery that was meant to liberate us all. As to how many of my family escaped, I can only speculate. A fitting grave for a failed patriot, wouldn't you say? What did Vela's treasure map point to? Something more valuable than gold, or so she said. An ancient artifact with the power to turn the world upside down. I was skeptical, but evidently the king was willing to burn my entire mission just to get a hold of it. We have no time for this. What's done is done. Regardless, nothing's changed. I still lack the courage either to help Vela or to stop her. You have, you have, de <laughs> you have destroyed my life for no good purpose. Now I shall bid you adieu. Um... Will you shut your mouth for one fucking second? His eyes narrow. I beg your pardon? How dare you? Are you completely ignorant about anything outside your cozy little life? Of course I'm not. My memory's from Horace and Cloudy, but he wasn't blinking stupid. So you know summer's been abolished and nobody can get anything to eat? Well, we kind of solved that problem. Well, I... He blinks. Wait, what? Uh, you've been spinning yarns to distract people while their neighbors die. Is that so flipping evil? What the fudge else are they meant to do? What was I meant to do? The world needs you to be frost now, please. There's no, there's a long silence as you stare at each other. Would you perhaps like a moment to get your breath back? I actually, I would. Frost lets out a long, deep belch. You're right, of course. 
I have been hiding. Hiding from the fear that my better world would never come to pass. No matter who's in charge, it always goes wrong. And yet I cannot bring myself to truly give up hope. At least for Horus, things were simple. Forget Vela, forget the king uh, with what's down here. Down there, you can build that world yourself. Uh, I think this is... Yeah, trying to convince him to help Vela. Forget Vela, forget the king. What With what's down there, you could build that world yourself. Who's to say that I could do any better? I, who devoted my body and soul to leaders who could not love me back. Who cocooned myself in artificial childhood rather than face my duties as a man. And yet, there is truth in what you say. The door is already open and cannot be closed. Sooner or later, someone will claim the power Vela seeks. If not her, then the king, or worse, better that I play some role than leave the stage to them. However, that's not enough. I want a full Inquisition pardon. I want Union citizenship for me, Samol, his family. I want 5,000 coins and silver bullion. Another 5,000 in fully assignable, non-recoverable promissory notes from the Usurers Guild of Riova. Uh, done. Good. Given the stakes and my skills, I think it's rather a bargain. Vela always planned to hole up in the blinding light if things went pear-shaped. Since she's now in the wind, I would guess you have already captured the fortress. I'll make my way there. But first... Ross closes his eyes, taking a deep breath. First, I must say goodbye to Sam. I'd rather hoped we might get married, perhaps even petitioned to adopt. Well, I suppose it'll have to wait. That can wait. Is that your cane? Is your leg okay? Yeah, there's the, the teacup he dropped. A triangular teacup. Samol is struggling to put a brave face on deep disquiet. I overheard your conversation. If Horus believes this is important, I won't stand in his way. But you bring that man back safe and sound, understand? I don't care what nonsense you put into his head. I need him. I promise I'll do my best to keep him safe. He nods, no longer able to meet your gaze. That's all I can ask. I'll be praying to the king for you both. Alright, well he's gonna meet us at, uh... At the ship. Oh, God. Haha. -ha. Escaped from death. Oh, I'm back in progress. I gotta run back home. Fast travel. Alright, well, we got Caxton Frost on our team. Now I think it's time we head back to... Yeah, we have no more side quests. I think it's time to head back to the Blinding Light. To the High Confessor. To plan your next course of action. Got it. Well, I'd say we did good here in the Clockwork Kingdom. We destroyed the king. More or less. He's in a infinite loop now. Of which there is no escape. We got Caxton Frost back. And uh, the snow here should dissipate and everyone can get back to work plowing the fields and uh, sowing the fields and harvesting their crops and everything. I think we did more good than harm. And that's really all you can ask for. So uh, let's head back to the blinding light. Alright, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.